Check out this.
<laughs> you tired hips. Mm. You sleepy girl. Let's go again. Okay. Let's the small cooper. <laughs> Good morning. Looks like it's another beautiful day. Bree and I are just starting to cook up some breakfast right now. She got a fire going. Uh, we're gonna have some bacon and oatmeal. And it's exciting uh, to, to hang out here for the day. It's a really interesting place. It's the the beach is neat here. Black sand. You don't see that very often around here. And um, yeah, yes, yeah, so we're gonna hang out our night and just enjoy ourselves. And it's gonna be a good day. I'm gonna be sad to go home tomorrow, but I'm a little bit sore anyway, so. It's all the crouching, actually. It's not the, the pack, it's the crouching under tarps when it's raining, and that sort of stuff that gets to my lower back. Oh, I'm hungry. It's food. The fire Brittany got started there is, uh, we got some nice set of coals now, so we're gonna cook some butt bacon. Now, we don't have everything refrigerated, because yeah, uh, we're hiking, we don't want to carry a cooler or anything like that, that's crazy. Um, so I have pre-cooked bacon. You find with bacon bits, it's uh, ready cooked bacon, like quick bacon, I don't know, um, Maple Leaf makes in Canada, and so does Selection. Selection's much cheaper. So we're gonna fry this up in our, uh, our pot, because we don't have a frying pan, and uh, just basically just need to warm it up and crisp it up, and it's good to go. Now I've dragged some coals out here. I'm gonna put the pot closer to me, away from the fire. This rear ease of use. I'm cutting the bacon in half. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that piece in the fire. Oh, did I? Oh. Yeah. I thought you were laughing because I, no. I was trying to look all badass. No, I was laughing because you flung it. Oh, <laughs> thank you for being here. I try not to be a messy camper, but sometimes things <laughs> get by me. Oh, good. I like this site more than 
more big. Well, like it's it's quieter, right? There's just one. We have our own thing. Yeah, you're more secluded here, which is awesome. Everybody at Warp Bay was really nice, but I'm used to uh, I'm used to privacy. <laughs> yeah, you're not secluded there. No, it's nice, so I get it. It's a little more superior-y, like mm -hmm. where we're used to with the rocks. Oh, we just have an amazing view here. Like we had a nice view at Warp Bay and that, but it was just looking out into like the lake, yeah. the islands and stuff. But like you see that everywhere. But this is just cool there was a, a a naked man on the beach <laughs> that was hilarious there's some folks uh there and uh i go down in the morning to get some water and everybody knows there's other people there i think and uh <laughs> uh so i go i see a guy by the water and he looks like he's about to look out to the view and I might go for a dip i go get some water for hibbert and i look up and he's yeah, i just see man butt was <laughs> like 100 feet away He's naked for a swim or anything. It doesn't bug me or anything like that. It's a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> Unexpected <laughs> yeah. nakedness. He wasn't flashing or anything. He's just, just going for a bath. You're just cleaning up. Usually you take your pants off when you're already in the water and kind of do it there so it's more discreet. But I mean, the older you are, the less F's you give. Oh, yeah. Some people are more comfortable with nudity than others. Yeah, more open with their bodies. Okay, I need a spork. I think there's a spork in there, mm -hmm. eh? There Thank you. Beauty. A little rock, there's a spacer. Doesn't take long. No, that shot goes really quick. So I find when uh, cooking bacon in a pot, it's good to have smaller pieces and just kind of keep stirring it, especially if it's a high heat. we got here. She likes having a job with the pack and she gets all worn out. And she eats and snoozes and cuddles, cuddles and that's about it. And she tangles knots with her rope. That's our thing. Yeah. So busy there you go. <coughs> hey pooch. She just somehow wrapped around like a tree. I don't know how it happened. But like it was like under it. <laughs> And she was just sitting there like, help me. <laughs> With that look on her face. Hey. Well, hello there. I really like cooking over a fire like this. But it's nice to have a stove when it's raining like the, or uh, when we get to go, when we got to Warp A. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is nice. Are you just up here for the bacon? Hey, you can't go that way. Other side. Other side. You can go that way. You can go that way. Okay. Nice. She just wants you for bacon. I know. Oh, you're so soft in the rain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you smell the bacon mm -mm. on my fingers? Are you a little problem bear? She's a little problem bear. Habituated. 
Might have to trap or relocate her somewhere else. <laughs> trap and release. So if anybody's watching this and thinking of doing the coastal trail in the park, or the whole thing, uh, and they're thinking about bringing their dog, I just want to explain that. Like this part, uh, the northern part from Gargantua up is uh, pretty good, and she's done very well on it, but I don't think I would take her Gargantua south, especially like Rye Lake Cove in some of the areas. There's just some sort of rocks that like, you probably wouldn't see wolves walking on them because they're not good for their pads. Yeah, she wouldn't make it up that. No, it would be very slow, and if she gets hurt, she's heavy. And, yeah. I mean, everybody's dog's different, and, but... This is much nicer for dogs on this side than uh, the other side. Yeah, this is like a regular like bush trail most of the time. You only see one kind of like coastally experience where we had to go up like a little rock yeah, and climb. But yeah. she, she's part like billy goat sometimes and she had no problem going up that. <laughs> but she's also huge too compared to some dogs so she could like jump up and get half, half it to yeah. a good jump height. I'm glad your pack has a handle so I can pick her up off things too with it hard to grab without it <laughs> but we've taken her on pretty rugged places and like different types of loops her entire life so she's kind of used to this whereas like some dogs aren't really used to these types of trails so you just got to be careful with what you do and make sure you always have a first aid kit with some extra things in there for your dog and Benadryl's really nice to have yeah Benadryl's a good good thing some men for dogs, but if they get into something with an allergic reaction, it's better than nothing. So you gotta know how much to give your dog though for its size. Talk to a vet about that. I think it's ready. Mm -hmm. Here, if you want my fork knot in there for sizzling. Oof. No bargain. No bargain. Go say hi. No bargain though. No.
Did they go Hibs? Here we are in Lake Superior, a devil's chair, and the lake's wide open behind us. I can see a little bit to the right of the devil's chair, which would be uh, towards Pakistan and past Wawa. But on the left hand side, that's wide open. And it speaks something about the power of this lake. It's a big lake. In fact, I'd almost consider it a sea if you added salt. Uh, the storms get big, the weather gets rough, and the fact that it's fresh water sometimes makes it more dangerous in the winter. Uh, the gales in November, if you folks are familiar, with Gordon Lightfoot talks about uh, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, one of the largest ships to wreck in Lake Superior. And that happened fairly recently too, but there have been many other throughout the ages. I mean, from the, the dawn of man bringing canoes through here, to steam engines, to modern diesel tankers. Uh, they've all had to deal with the lake and you know, plan accordingly. If you aren't familiar with the vast size of Lake Superior, it's the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area and it's the third largest lake in the world by volume. And it holds approximately 12,000 cubic kilometers of water. So at the deepest point, Lake Superior is 400 meters deep or 1,300 feet deep. Uh, the average depth of Lake Superior is 147 meters or 485 feet deep. Now the neat thing about Lake Superior is it holds so much water and it only comes out at one point at uh, the St. Mary's River that it takes the water 191 years to refresh. So the raindrop that lands in this bay 191 years ago may be exiting out of the lake now, which is pretty cool. I think that the water we're drinking of could have been the same water that the voyageurs canoed through. There's so much history to it. Uh, the water is older than me. I mean, water is old, I guess, but it's neat to think of that because we consume it. So I can't stop thinking about the names of Gargantua and Pantagruel uh, Bay. And the fact that when I looked at Pantagruel Bay, it took up the story of Gargantua and Pantagruel. And uh, I thought it was kind of neat to a little bit of reading about that. So at first I thought, you know, I was, I was trying to look up to find out when the, those names came up in maps. And a lot of the older French maps aren't in that high of a detail, at least the ones that I can see public access. So I thought, you know what, the next time they named a bunch of things was in the 1830s or 50s, but and the British did it and they did, uh, you know, very clean cut British style surveyors and everything. Everything was named. So I thought, you know, maybe they're named after, by, after by scholars who like history and like the thought, the idea of voyagers staying there and naming them after stories they may listen to around the fire. But now, as I come here and I realize this is named Devil's Chair, and this was named by the Jesuits, and this is past here from Sault Ste. Marie, typically where the explorers are coming from. And I'm thinking that Pantagruel and Gargantua have been named that for a long time. I think it has been unofficial. You know, people coming through the area, people that travel through know the names eventually got into the maps, but I think that they've been named that for a while. So if you want to look up something interesting, uh, the story of Gargantua and uh, Pantagruel is uh, really neat. Uh, from what I understand of it is a type of satire is almost like uh, the South Park of the time where they made fun of very serious issues uh, with like slapstick humor just to kind of, you know, sometimes you got to laugh at things just to get over them, you know. Um, so anyways, yeah, I think it's that sort of humor. And, I could definitely picture a bunch of uh, you know working class voyageurs listening to some dirty jokes and stuff uh, around the fire, so it makes even more sense to me. So maybe next time I uh, come here and come to War Bay or something like that, or Gargantua, maybe we could do some ghost stories or something like that, or tell some older stories around the fire and uh, yeah, kind of maybe relive some moments that those in the past had lived before. I think that'd be cool to do.